Hey guys, so today I wanted to make a video on one of my favorite nameplates out there, the Daytona. If you follow the channel, you'll know that I have a 2006 Daytona Charger in Torred, and I really love that car, and that's what inspired this whole thing. This video will be kind of documentary style, focusing on the history of the Daytona, going through all the various iterations that were created, including the Charger Daytona from 1969 to 1977, and then the Dodge Daytona sports car from 1984 up until 1993. I already made the second part from 2006 until the present day in 2020, for some reason I did that video first, but you can find that in the top right corner or the description if you want to learn more about the modern Daytonas. For each of these cars we'll look at the unique features that make it a Daytona, how many were produced, exterior and interior specs, and more. So whether you have a Daytona yourself, used to have one, or just love them in general, hopefully you enjoy this video and appreciate these beautiful and powerful cars. So let's begin. Dodge, which falls under the American automobile brand Chrysler, has now produced seven different variations of the Daytona as we reach 2020. The Daytona name is taken from Daytona Beach, Florida, which has hosted auto racing events for years, and they still host one of NASCAR's premier events to this day, the Daytona 500. Funnily enough, before a Dodge first used the Daytona name in 1969, it was actually used by automaker Studebaker a few years earlier. They had a model called the Lark, which was a compact car produced from 1959 to 1966. Studebaker was trying to phase out the Lark name, and they would introduce different nameplates in the early 1960s, like Commander, Cruiser, and Daytona. So the first Daytona went into production in 1962, with a convertible and hardtop to replace the previous top trim levels, and that would last until 1966. So that's the first time the world ever saw the Daytona name on a car. Now we move on to 1969, where we saw the first Dodge Charger Daytona with just 503 built for the year. Interestingly, off the assembly line, these vehicles were actually Dodge Charger 500s, and Dodge had them shipped off-site, having them transformed into the Daytona that you see on screen. This was one of the four famous aero cars, which were muscle cars designed specifically to race on the NASCAR circuit in 1969 and 1970. Alongside the Daytona, that included the Plymouth Superbird, four Torino Talladega, and Mercury Cyclone Spoiler 2. Together, they were known as the Winged Warriors. Dodge had failed in 1968 with the Dodge Charger 500 in NASCAR, and the outstanding Plymouth driver Richard Petty had left for the competition, going to Ford. So that's why the Daytona was created, just to win NASCAR races. It was relatively successful, winning its first race at the inaugural Talladega 500. Overall, it won two races in 1969, four more in 1970, and it won the USAC and ARCA race circuits as well, setting various race and pole records. The first driver to crack 200 miles per hour in NASCAR history, Buddy Baker, also drove the Dodge Charger Daytona when he set that record on March 24, 1970 at Talladega as well. This Daytona had a 23-inch stabilizer rear wing, a sheet metal nose cone replacing the traditional grille, stainless steel A-pillar covers, different front fenders and hood, and cooling scoops mounted in the fenders. It also had the 1969 Charger RT trim specs, with heavy duty brakes and suspension, and the 440 cubic inch 7.2 liter Magnum engine standard. Out of the 503 Daytonas produced, just 70 of them had the 426 cubic inch 7 liter Hemi V8 engine, making those versions very rare and collectible today. Unfortunately, by the end of 1970, the four aero cars were banned from NASCAR due to having engines bigger than 300 cubic inches. All the winged warriors retained very high resale value years later, with 440 Daytonas fetching up to 100,000, and the most valuable 426 Hemi Daytona selling for 900,000 at an auction in Florida. I do talk more about this specific sale in my most expensive Chrysler sold video, but that Daytona was one of 70 with the 426 Hemi, and just 20 of those had the 4-speed manual transmission. The winning bidder was actor David Spade, whose character drove a Daytona beater in the 2001 comedy film Joe Dirt. Spade wanted the real thing, so he forked over the 900 grand for it. The Daytona name did return from 1975 to 1977 on the fourth generation Charger B body, but it's not what typically comes to mind when you think of one. This time around, the Charger was sharing the same body as the Chrysler Cordoba. This Charger started out with just the SE, Special Edition, but the lineup was expanded to Base, SE, Sport, and then Daytona. As I mentioned, the first 1969 Daytonas came off the assembly line as a Charger 500, so this version of the car was technically the first Daytona produced on the assembly line. 
The Daytona package featured two-tone stripe and decal appearance, torsion bar heavy-duty suspension, and some of them had a tachometer. As for the engines, either the 360 5.9-liter V8 or the 406.6 liter V8 could be had. The 360 had 180 horsepower, while the 400 had 190 horsepower, and both had 290 pound-feet of torque. It was hard to find exact production numbers, but these cars are extremely rare for a few reasons. First, Chrysler was using cheap steel from overseas, which caused many cars to rust out really bad. And they also didn't sell extremely well, due to a shift in the market where gas prices were increasing, and gas-guzzling V8s were no longer what consumers were looking for. As we move away from the muscle cars, there was also another Daytona produced from 1984 to 1993, known simply as the Dodge Daytona. Chrysler had introduced the Daytona and the Chrysler Laser on October 1st of 1983. The Laser was marketed as the Chrysler brand's first sports car and was a clone of the Daytona but only came in the upscale trim levels and the Laser was around from 1984 to 1986 emphasizing European luxury. Going back to the Dodge Daytona, it was a front wheel drive hatchback based on the Chrysler G platform which was derived from the Chrysler K platform. This Daytona replaced the Mitsubishi Galant based Challenger and slotted between the Charger and Conquest in the Dodge lineup. For the first year in 1984, the Daytona was available in three different trim levels, Standard, Turbo, and Turbo Z, with production of 49,347 for all. Production for each of the first three years was around the mid-40,000 range. Car and Driver also listed the Turbo Z on their 10 best list for 1984. The 2.2-liter Chrysler K engine was used for the first two years in normally aspirated form with 93 horsepower or turbocharged form with 142 horsepower and 160 pound-feet of torque. The power would go up to 146 for the following year in 1985. One thing to note is that some of the earlier 1984 Turbo Z models were more luxurious than any other year due to having Mark Cross leather, light-up speakers, and rear amplifier switches, all which were dropped after 1984. 1986 saw the middle turbo model dropped, and a new 2.5 liter 100 horsepower 4-cylinder was added for the base model, along with a new T-roof package, which 5,984 customers would choose on their Daytona. Also added was a Carroll Shelby suspension package on the Turbo Z, adding large front and rear anti-sway bars, performance-tuned struts, and wider 225-50-15 tires. This foreshadowed the 1987 Performance Shelby Z trim, which had an available Turbo 2 intercooled version of the 2.2 liter engine, with a jump up to 174 horsepower and 200 pound-feet of torque, along with suspension upgrades and four-wheel disc brakes. 1987 also saw the Daytona restyled externally, with features like pop-up headlights. In 1989, the ES model was added with an appearance package and equipment group on the base models to try to attract the average buyer to purchase one instead of just those looking for sporty looks or performance. The 2.2 liter turbo 1 engine was replaced with a 2.5 liter turbo rated at 150 horsepower and 180 pound-feet of torque. There was also an AGSCS or Carroll Shelby competition model, which had the 2.2 liter turbo 2 engine and basically most of the features from the Shelby. In 1990, the Daytonas got an interior refresh with a modern cockpit interior and also a 3 liter Mitsubishi V6 was offered. 1991 got a new IROC model with the 3 liter V6 or the turbo 2.5 liter, and some of these IROCs have decals which were added halfway through the production cycle, but otherwise there's absolutely no difference from the 1991 Daytona Shelbys. Before we look at the 1992 and 1993 years, the performance was actually very solid on these Daytonas. The IROC RT, or Shelby versions, as I said they're basically the same thing, did 0-60 to 60 in 6.2 seconds and the quarter mile in 14.6 seconds, while the base model could do it in 8.5 seconds and 16.2 seconds respectively. 1992 saw the last facelift with flush round headlights, a new grille and rear fascia, window moldings, and the new Dodge Ram logo on the hood. The 3 liter V6 became standard on the higher end models, and a new RT package went back to the turbo 2.2 liter engine, offering a turbo 3 version. The Shelby trim was also discontinued as Carroll Shelby would leave Chrysler, however there were a few 1992 Daytona IROX made, with the Shelby name just to try to boost sales, and that would be the last Chrysler production vehicle with the Shelby nameplate. In February of 1993, Chrysler cut the Daytona production, leaving a hole in the Dodge lineup and taking away the Daytona nameplate for a very long time. This Daytona did sell well, peaking in 1988 with 72,171 units moved, and selling almost 387,000 in total over the 10 model years. 
The Dodge Avenger Coupe would replace the Daytona in 1995, a joint venture between Chrysler and Mitsubishi Motors. The Daytona name would eventually return for the Charger 13 years later in 2006. One last cool thing to mention was that Chrysler played around with putting a V8 into the Daytona, which would have made for some serious performance. They had just taken over Lamborghini and used a 3.5 liter V8 from the Jalpa with an all-wheel drive system, but unfortunately the project was cancelled due to the engine oil pan having only 1.5 inches of ground clearance, which wasn't safe for a production vehicle. So that's where we finish off this video. Again, if you want to see more, the other video is in the top right corner or also in the description covering 2006 to 2020 Daytonas. Hopefully you guys enjoyed going through the history of the Dodge Daytona as much as I did. Let me know if you guys have a Daytona in your garage down in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you're new to the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next video.